As we gather back together after this particular summer, we're hearing some stories that are off the charts. It's been a weird summer, so we're going to talk about it. Do you ever feel like you're spending so much time at the office that you have no time left for camp? With UltraCamp, you can track attendance, manage staff applications, and streamline registration so you'll be back outside in no time. Find out more at ultracampmanagement.com slash campcode. Welcome to Camp Code, a podcast brought to you by Go Camp Pro. We have created and are dedicated to this podcast because we believe that staff training is one of, if not the most important part of your job as a camp director. Staff training is what prepares your staff to care for their kids, to feel confident in their skills, and to do their jobs to the best of their ability and to learn along the way. A well thought out and intentional staff training will help you in more ways than you can imagine. And we need to help each other bring our very best. Welcome everyone to the ninth season of Camp Code. And although it sounds like we should be celebrating all things camp and leadership training, and we will in future episodes, don't worry, today we think it's important to slow down, take a pulse, and address where we're all at. Before we dive in, we're just going to take a moment to introduce ourselves. And Ruby, could we start with you, please? For sure. I'm Ruby Compton. I'm the Chief Exploration Officer for Ruby Outdoors and a general friend of camp. Uh, I'm based out of uh, the Blue Ridge Mountains in Western North Carolina, and I'm just okay. Thanks, Ruby. And Gabrielle, how about you? Well, my name is Gabrielle Rail, and I'm one of the camp directors of Camp Waro. Camp Waro is an all-girls camp in the Laurentian Mountains of Quebec, Canada, and we focus on creating a positive female environment um, for our campers and staff members. And I am doing so-so. Thanks, Gab. And I'm Beth Allison. I'm co-owner of Camp Hacker and Go Camp Pro. As a camp consultant and a trainer, I build on my experience as a director and executive director and 43 summers at camp. My passion is building solid, supportive, and purposeful communities through intentional and thoughtful leadership training. And I am okay, just okay. It's now been 18 months since the start of the pandemic, a year and a half of illness, of stress, of panic, of fear, of anger, of protests, of loss, ever-changing policies, procedures, constant news updates, And this doesn't even begin to cover all of the other issues our world is dealing with these days. So as we begin our podcast today, how the heck are you? Ruby, let's start with you. Yeah, um, I'm okay. I'm just okay. I don't know. I'm going to throw in just. um, I had a, a pretty decent summer. I experienced what many camps did, which was the shuffle of an and experience of being understaffed. So I mm-hmm. started the summer, worked at a girls camp. I uh, was on the adventure staff and had kind of signed on with like, well, I have this other part-time job guiding on the weekends. Like I really just want to be at camp. So I want a raft guide. I want a zip line. I want to take kids on hikes. And that's what I want to do. That sounds good. I don't want to be in charge. And <laughs> that was all good and well until our adventure director got a full-time job restarting one of the outdoor ed programs here in the area. And they looked at me and said, Ruby, do you want to be in charge? I was like, no, no, I will say they compensated me well for stepping into that position. So that made it helpful. And I have to credit our adventure director for dealing with all the the challenges at the beginning of the summer, because the program looked really different and kids were traveling by cabin, not free choice and trips out of camp looked really different. And so just figuring everything out, that was a lot of effort. And fortunately, Pretty much it was all figured out by the time I took over. Um, And in that same week, we had one girl who was already one staff member who was already going to leave early. She planned to only be there for a certain part of the summer. Another staff member who quit and then our adventure director left. So we went from having six staff to three uh, in the course of about 
five, six days. And I was like, why is this? Uh, but we did hire someone else on and got through the summer. And, and really, truly, I had some really wonderful days, got a lot of time playing on the river, um, got to bring in some other folks into the organization to help out with river trips that it was really fun to get to kind of see them be joyful out on the water um, and just re- uh, relearning how important it is for me to be outside. And so folks that have gotten in touch with me about projects since the summer have probably heard me be like, no, I'm not taking that on because it involves sitting in front of a computer. So <laughs> sorry, <laughs> but uh, a lot of thinking about what does the future look like? I feel like that's been a lot of what I've been doing here in the last few months um, and reprioritizing how I spend my time. Um, but also just like, extreme pandemic fatigue. <laughs> and, and that's not new. And that's not something that other folks aren't experiencing. I know everybody's experiencing that, just ready for it to be done. Um, and that, yeah, I would say that's, that's the short summary of how I'm doing, but mostly pretty good. I'm playing on rivers a lot. And so that makes me very happy. It makes me happy that you are happy playing on rivers. That's great. I have none near me, but I live vicariously through you. Gabrielle, how are you doing? I'm doing, as I said, so, so, um, I think I thought last summer was my hardest summer and, uh, actually this summer was our hardest summer, I would say. Um, I'd like to preface though, that I, I haven't the, the joy of having campers on site and staff doing, you know, what they're hired to do, um, totally outweighs how tough it was. I, I was really happy that, um, you know, I had very, I had moments during the summer where I was thinking, you know, maybe I could be a gardener. That could be a future <laughs> um, job for me. I like getting dirt. I like getting, making things pretty. I like get, getting my hands dirty. But then I remembered, you probably have to remember all the plants and what they're called. And that sounds like a lot of work. Um, so I did have moments like that. But overall, I was thinking how wonderful it was just to be with kids. And, and, and it really showed me how much I actually do miss being with kids and, and not having campers last summer. Um, I, it was something that was really missing for me. So just having that experience, but, you know, as, uh, Rui was talking about COVID, you know, fatigue, you know, I, it's, I experienced it, but I, you know, my staff experienced it. And I think a lot of them came in just so excited. It's also that flip side of not realizing how stressed you are and how, difficult things are, and especially with all of the changes we had to make um, so that we could run camp, you know, you're, you're creating a whole brand new program. And essentially we have been fine tuning a program that's been running for a hundred years. And then we came up with something completely new and had to run it for the first time. And so there's a lot of adjustments and a lot of um, just difficulties that way. And a lot of feelings and, you know, but I couldn't be prouder of my team and I couldn't be prouder of the work that we put in, but the amount of work that went into it was just huge. And I don't know if this was the case in the United States I or in Ontario, but in Quebec, our bugs, particularly mm -hmm. wasps, have been unbelievable. And we yes. usually have, I would say, in a summer, maybe, probably about maybe three stings, wasp stings in the summer. And I'm being... I'm lowballing it when I say about 25, 30 wasps things this summer and the amount of wasp nests we had to kill my father and I going around camp killing wasps and, you know, staff cheering be like, yeah, you know, <laughs> like go. it was so crazy. And they were just everywhere. And so, so powerful. It just felt like almost a metaphor for the feelings that our campers and our staff members and, and our families were feeling like this, surcharge of energy and like those wasps for me were were kind of that metaphor of that surcharge of upsetness and frustration and sadness and heartbreak mm. they are just as bad in ontario i'm not oh, sure what they're like down south but uh, south of our border um wow. but <laughs> since the border's still closed but um <laughs> but they certainly have been uh, also very prevalent up here yeah yeah and not fun that is not fun it's not fun. No, but the, you know, the wasps were having feels and so were the people at Woro. I shared that I was just okay. I am functioning. I'm productive. 
nowhere near as much as I'd like to be, but I am productive and I'm feeling supported by family and close friends, but I am also exhausted, finding it difficult to sleep. And my body is letting me know that I'm struggling with far too many headaches and other aches as I (laughs) approach my 60s. My mind is constantly going and I'm having a really hard time shutting it off. And even though my mind won't stop running, I'm having difficulty concentrating (laughs) and making decisions. And I, like everybody else, am so done with COVID and all that that entails Patience and empathy are two qualities that I usually work really hard to cultivate in my life, but I am struggling these days to find them for those people who think very differently than I do. And this is weighing me down. I think my biggest concern is that our world has become so divided and there are just too many examples out there of folks attacking one another and hating on each other rather than listening and working together and coming up with solutions for the common good, which is, of course, where we put the majority of our effort when we're developing programs and when when I'm helping clients design staff training. So I'm feeling like I don't have any control over it. And for a control freak, (laughs) that is weary. I'm weary. So that's how we're doing. And before we continue, we have an ad for you from our amazing sponsor. Hey, friends. Do you remember your why for getting into camping in the first place? I'm guessing it didn't involve sitting in front of a computer screen, clicking in a database. Sometimes all the busy work and button clicking associated with running camp keeps us from seeing why we are there. That's why I encourage you to get to know my friends at Ultra Camp. Ultra Camp helps you get back to spending time remembering why you love working at camp. How do they do this? Ultra Camp takes the stress out of using their registration software. With Ultra Camp, you don't have to worry about limits. They offer custom reports, uh, unlimited custom reports, unlimited support, unlimited training, and unlimited users. And if you think all this sounds good, too good to be true, friends, it is real. Visit ultracampmanagement.com slash camp code. My friends at Ultra Camp would love to show you a future where you finally get to have the time to get back to what's really important, running camp. Visit their website, ultracampmanagement.com slash camp code and set up a time to chat. So you heard how three of us are doing a very small sample of the camp community. Ruby, what else have you been hearing from colleagues and other people in the industry? How is everybody else doing? The the statement, that was the hardest summer of my life. I've heard that over and over and over again. Uh, Mm -hmm. And largely not because of COVID outbreaks or getting kids to wear masks or dealing with vaccination stuff, or even dealing with parents who weren't on board with whatever protocols camp had. I mean, there was obviously some of that going on, but the mental health issues just were through the roof this summer. And that's, that's something I'm hearing um, across the board to severities that are just wild um, hearing about really, really tough stuff happening in a lot of camp communities And, you know, I'm a really firm believer that kids are resilient and many folks are dealing with it and we're making do. And I think the folks who are not coping well are like really not okay. And, and an even deeper, more intense, stronger level of not okay compared to a usual non-pandemic summer. Um, and, and that concerns me. And, and it's that thing where like, so I, I teach outdoor education in the, the spring and fall, and we've had about 50% of our schools cancel because of staffing or not being able to get people there, just, you know, the state of schools right now. And um, I, there's also the like, yeah, but also why would you bring your kids to a place where there's no hospital capacity? And, and that's what I feel like is, is kind of the broader what's happening in the industry is like, we don't have any care capacity right now. And that's not the usual for camp. And, and so that's, I think what part to me of what makes things feel 
extra broken <laughs> right now is that everybody's at a really hard place and like nobody has capacity much for for handling all the challenges that are out there. And as you said, Beth, like I, it's hard for me to watch the news and just even watch what's going on around me and think, oh yeah, we're going to get out of this. Like, yep. I, I don't see a way that we heal going forward. And I'm not trying to be negative. I just am not creative enough to see that right now. Um, but I will end on a happy note. And that is that last night I watched the MTV VMAs. Um, I had them on while I was doing uh, some cleaning and I do have hope for this next generation. <laughs> are going to solve a lot of the problems. And there was so much like creativity and fun and this, like a lot of speaking to the joy of being back to live performances and performing from an audience. And it's like, okay, there is a vision that it can be better, but I, it, the path there is very unclear. And I think that's a feeling I'm having in the industry right now. Yeah, me too. Me too. Gabs, what about you? What have you been hearing? Although uh, you've so been sort of stuck at, not stuck at, but submerged in camp I was for very, the whole summer. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think I, I spoke to either of you during the summer. Um, no, I, I was, I was all in and it, and I needed to be all in. Um, <clears throat> what I learned was um, the biggest lesson I came out of it was uh, if I think I know, I don't know. And that, that was a humbling experience for me where usually I can pick up on patterns and certain patterns from previous years and adjust accordingly. And I'm pretty good at being ahead of the curve. And, um, and this year the, the lesson to me was if, if I think I know how to handle a certain situation, I don't, I'm going to do my best, um, but then be prepared for whatever reaction is going to happen afterwards and then try to learn from that. And, um, and, and because I was so submerged in what I was doing, I, I wasn't speaking with a lot of people. And uh, what, I, what I found surprising though, was I did get phone calls and I did get text messages from, from peers, um, other camp professionals that were reaching out because they were having such a tough time. And, um, and I, you know, I do talk to other people during the summer, um, just this summer I was you know, locked in. And, and from those experiences, the tough ones I was going through, a lot of camp directors, I think, also just felt alone. Didn't know, you know, necessarily where to get their own personal support from, whether mm -hmm. from their partner, if they, if, they, if they do have a partner, or the board, or parents, or their staff. It just felt like a, a summer where a lot of camp directors were struggling on their own um, and just didn't have answers to deal with with problems that none of us had faced before and a lot of unpredictability so as, as Ruby was talking about not necessarily COVID um, specific to COVID like masks or actually getting COVID at camp but really the the state of 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 our of, of the people that we work with and and I think that that's something that is in a way sobering moving forward thinking about what, what does this generation need in the sense of, of feeling supported and heard? Um, and, uh, you know, what does camp look like in the future? I think is definitely some, some thoughts that are going on, but, but certainly it's been, from what I hear, been a pretty tough summer. I did have a couple of good conversations too, but overall kind of a tough summer. Which is to add on to there, Gabs, like that, the point that you made about people feeling really alone, that's why we are having this episode to, yeah. to be abundantly clear about yeah. it is that if we don't want you to think that everybody else just had this like hoorah summer and everything's great. Mm. <laughs> it, the, the camp industry is hurting right now. And, and yeah. we wanted to talk about it a little bit today. So thanks for bringing that up. Yeah. And it's not, and it's also not to, um, it's not also to, to put away like the, the, the people that have, re have really worked hard and had had great summers and great experiences. As, as I said, my summer was very tough. Um, but I, I can be prouder of, of, of my team and, and, and how they, our team, you know, and how they, they rose above, but my goodness, I don't want them to do that again. I, I don't want people to go through that again. I don't want to go through that again. So I think it's, it's, that is important to talk about. And, um, and as you were talking about Ruby is, is also how do we create, I don't know, it, um, support within, within the camp industry support within, 
you know, your own organization and even maybe adjustments to how you run your organization to, you know, create space for people that need a little bit more space when it's necessary. You know, I don't know, but it's what's what we're going to be talking about, I'm sure. What I noticed in the last month is one of the biggest purges of the camp industry. More and more directors left camping this fall. Uh, I don't have statistics for it, but it feels like more than ever before, uh, simply because, as Ruby said, that capacity to do all the things they usually did and to do them really well um, was just suffering and they just didn't have it anymore. And it was time for them to go for various reasons, but such a hard summer. So that was really hard to watch them fall that way. And there's nothing wrong with leaving when it's time to go. Um, It just seemed to be such a large number of them that I found it, it was sad for me to watch. Um, In my other catch-ups with directors in the last couple of weeks, every single one of them said (laughs) what we've been saying, I'm tired, tired, like never before, bone weary, soul weary, completely drained. And the word hard doesn't seem to adequately fit the kind of summer that most of us just finished. So staffing issues, staffer and camp mental health concerns, all those kinds of things. One director said to me, everything seemed to trigger people this summer. Every issue, every conversation, people were just triggered and I didn't quite know how to help. Other directors shared with me how understaffed they were, and Ruby talked about that, not just because they couldn't find staff who wanted to work at camp, but also because they had so many registrations. Parents were saying, here, just take my money and my child. They really, really need to be at camp, that some people had to turn campers away because they didn't have the staff for it. And in some years, we may look at that as a good problem to have, but these directors also knew that kids needed camp more than ever. And they couldn't help. So it caused for them frustration and anxiety and for some guilt, even though none of it was their fault. And these examples that I gave you are from very seasoned directors who have cultivated great coping skills over the years uh, and are still really struggling. So as Ruby said, we share some of these stories with you because we really want you to know that if this was you, you are not alone. So many of us in this industry are experience of experiencing a very different kind of end of summer tired. And even if you had a successful summer with good camper numbers and no COVID cases and seeing kids bloom and blossom again and staff struggle and grow, it was likely still really hard, phenomenally draining. We very intentionally today didn't want to give you a long list of here's what you should be doing right now. Because for many of us, that's just too overwhelming to contemplate in September 2021. We're still processing our summer. Many of us unable to sit down and make to-do lists and start on 2022. At least not yet. But what we want you to know for today is that it's okay not to be okay right now. And it's okay to say you're not okay. And in fact, it's brave. The time is now to take care of you. It's time to replenish your own resources. It's time for some serious self-care and focus on restoring your own energy to refuel. So Ruby, what advice or thoughts do you have for folks who are dealing with all of this, this September? For sure. For sure. Um, So the first thing that I want to encourage you to do is to just write stuff down. Um, interestingly today, so many of you may know that my sister and my nephew moved in with me at the beginning of the pandemic and we were actually approaching the, like transitioning them back to their home. And I, I walked through on my way out the door and I asked my sister if she was okay. She was kind of looking at me like, you know, you, you could tell when someone's not okay. And, um, she just like tears started falling down. So I I was like, all right, grocery trips, not important at this moment. (laughs) Let's, let's talk about what's going on. And one of the things she talked about was this, the stress of trying to keep up with all the things that need to happen in the next short amount of time to like get her son moved up to New York and to get herself packed up and go to, and just like all those things. And I was like, you just got to write it down, girlfriend, (laughs) like just 
get it out of your brain because you're exerting some mental energy and trying to like keep up with that list and like, Oh, I don't want to forget this. Oh, I don't want to forget this. And whether you look at the list ever again or not, just like write it down. And so if you're feeling some of that, you know, kind of generalized anxiety or generalized stress, like just the general level is up a little bit. It's hard to point to one thing where it's like, ah, oh, if I could just solve this one thing and everything's going to be better. It's not like that. It's, it's kind of all around you all the time. Uh, write it down, make a list, draw it. It doesn't have to be a, a coherent list, <laughs> like just get it out of your brain and that'll help you organize and, and pause and reflect on some of that stuff. Um, and that may give you an opportunity to look at, okay, are there things here that I can delegate? Are there things that are just completely out of my control? And no matter how much of a control freak I am, I have to let go of some of the worry because it, it's just, there's nothing I can do. I can only manage my own response to it. Um, so, so allow yourself that I think also allowing yourself just some quiet time <laughs> and some time to sit and stare out the window, um, or to go on walks or, you know, whatever your exercise of choice. Um, I know for me, the river has always been very therapeutic to me. Um, and it's a place that I have to go and like some of it's focusing on keeping myself alive <laughs> and that that takes me out of the spiral of, Oh, what about this? Oh, this thing. And I'm nervous about this because I have to focus all my energy on that one thing. So if there's a task or an activity or a hobby for you that, that, that can be similar, I'd encourage you to like repick up that hobby or, or at least put it on your calendar, just like create a space on your calendar and say, I'm going to do this for a couple hours. Um, and then the last thing I would say is um, to, uh, see if you can think about an experience, um, how to, how you respond to triggers, Beth, you, you mentioned that, like, it feels like people are getting triggered or like set off all the time. And I think that's one of the tools that we have to hone going forward, that we can't just get triggered and melt down. Like we have to be able to take some more control over that. Like, oh, I'm just so mad about this thing or, oh, I'm really upset about this thing. And you can still be upset and do some beneficial actions. Um, you can still be upset and address the problem. You can still be upset and find a solution. Um, you can still be upset and not have a solution, but at least be functional. <laughs> and the problem is when we get so upset that, we, we just stop operating in the world. And, and that's what I worry about is that people get to this place where they, that we're at this like heightened kind of always something that can set us off and we have to do some more practice. And that may involve therapy that may involve medications. It may involve reading, writing podcasts. There's lots of things that that may involve, but I would encourage you to spend some time with that this year and in the next, especially a few weeks and see if you can do some active work on that. Great. Wise words. Thank you, Ruby. How about you, Gabs? What advice do you have for folks? Well, you know, I'll, I'll just speak for myself. Um, I, I think it, it, I think it truly is if, if this is possible for you is, is to um, put the oxygen mask on you first. Um, and I, in a, uh, around May, I could just feel my body and my, particularly my mind struggling, really struggling more than it, it has. Um, I've, I've never experienced it that way. And I, and I don't know what it's like to go through a burnout and I, and that's never burnouts just as an FYI is not a reset button. It's not like you have a burnout, you relax and then boom, you get back. It's like a very badly injured part of your body that takes a really long time to heal. So we never want to get to that point, but I could feel this might feel what it feels like before burnout. That's what I could, that's what I could feel. And I really, really had to think, how do I curve this? Because I, I don't want to get to that point. Um, and for me, it, it was taking a significant time amount of time off. So I'm taking um, September, I'm taking a month off basically. And, um, I don't, you know, I've had so many people ask, you know, well, what are you doing? I said, well, I don't know. <laughs> we will see. <laughs> I have no idea. The plan is, I don't know what I'm going to do. I'm very excited about it. I'm, I'm not, um, motivated to go on any big trips. I don't have any big plans. And I think that's exactly what I need. Um, and just to let my mind and my body do what it needs to do. 
um, and just sort of take care of myself. And I know that that I am in a privileged position to be able to do that. And, and so I wouldn't be able to relax if I didn't feel like other, you know, if my own personal finances weren't taken care of, et cetera, et cetera, obviously we have to do what there's, there's a give and take here. But if you can put your, the oxygen mask on yourself first, um, I know that there's so many answers I'm going to have to, or questions I'm going to have to explore for next season so that I can, you know, adjust camp the way that is needed to create a healthy environment or as healthy as possible environment for everybody that participates. And that's going to take some creativity and some of uh, flexibility and some thinking the way I've never maybe looked at camp before. And so I really feel like taking this time is going to help me do that in the sense of just letting my subconscious, I'm a big fan of subconscious thinking, letting it do, letting it do its thing while I do something else. So if you can do some of the things that uh, Ruby was talking about before, even meditating therapy, or I, I also used to love, um, uh, you know, going down the river, uh, river rat, when you have only one thing to focus on um, at a time, uh, that's really helpful too. So whatever you can do to, to put yourself first for a bit, I think is going to be very beneficial. Well, for me anyways. Thanks, Gav. And it doesn't have to be a month. If you can't no. afford a month right now yeah. in your business, in your in your life, a week, two weeks, whatever yes. you've got, a four-day weekend, something um, that you know will be just for you, I think can yeah, also make a world of difference. Exactly. And I think that, I think that, um, you know, and it's so weird just even talking about it because I know it's, I know it's okay to take a month off. I know that it's okay, but it's so uncomfortable for me to even share that right now because I'm somebody that doesn't take really time off because I love doing stuff. I'm a, I love we've never noticed. (laughs) I just need (laughs) to constantly have projects going. Um, and that makes me happy. Um, so, and so, I, but I do want to say I'm taking a month off because I don't want, I want people to hear that, you know, camp directors, mental wellness is really, really important. We're in charge of lives and we're in charge of young people that are being molded and shaped. Um, I know that personally, this is what helped me get through the summer is that I knew that I had this month coming and that shift helped my brain to feel okay and et cetera, et cetera. So, you know, um, I'm saying a month, but I also want to emphasize I'm saying a month because it it was very tough and I don't usually take, I I don't even take usually two weeks off. That's how tough the summer was. But at the same time, I'm excited to, you know, see what we can make from what we learned this summer for next year. But I need the month, you know? So I think also putting your foot down saying, this is what I need. Uh, if you can do it because it it's, it'll be beneficial for yourself and others. Great. Thanks, Gab. And as we all know, a great quality in leaders is compassion, which also has to include self-compassion. So I encourage us all to be gentle on ourselves, to give ourselves time and space that Gab was talking about, but also grace. So Perhaps this is a time to ask yourself some questions to help take care of you. So things like, do I need a break from social media? Every time I pick up my phone, I know I need this break. And yet I I told my husband today, you need to just take my phone away from me uh, because I'm just looking at news and I'm, I'm reading things and then I fall down the rabbit hole of comments and I get more mad. Do I need to reduce my screen time? How can I get my body moving in a way that feels good to me? What's what works for you? Am I feeding myself well? If I'm not, and I maybe I live alone, who can I reach out to who might want to cook with me? So we cook a bunch of meals and then we each, you know, have meals for the week. Do I need to connect more with people? Do I need to connect less? And we're all going to have different answers to that question. Do I need to figure out ways to spend more time outside? And as camp folks, we all know the actual answer to that. Um, What might I like to do that will bring me joy? So I took up painting for the very first time in my life a few months ago. I haven't had an art class since eighth grade. And let's see what I did there. I did that for my American friends because Canadians would say grade eight. Um, But I find it really therapeutic. 
Do I need to talk to a professional about how I am feeling? Should I share with my boss, my board, as Gab said, my colleagues that I need some time, that I need to recuperate before I dive in again to a busy camp season, which starts, as we know, long before summer? Um, but do you have to have those conversations? Should you have them with your board and say, I just need to you know, take some time so that I can be my best for you? Is there somebody I can do something for? So no pressure here, of course, but we all know that random acts of kindness make us feel better. So for example, if I choose to bake two dozen delicious, warm chocolate chip cookies, who might I like to share them with me? But take some time now to reflect on what you need. How can you refuel your tank and give yourself full permission to do so? Instead of questions to ask yourself, here is another point of view that I found interesting, and it really hit home for me, and I wonder if it might resonate with some of you. So this was something that I came across a couple of weeks ago. Laura McInerney is famous for her TED Talk, We Don't Move On From Grief, We Move Forward With It, but she also wrote a piece recently, and um, I love it. It's called, Let This Be Your Mantra, Nothing New For Now. And here are some of the brilliant words that she shared. The, t- the more time you spend on Instagram, the more certain you can become that you're the only person in the world who is struggling right now. The only person who hasn't figured out a way to optimize their way through 2020 or 2021. I have news for you. You are not. The other day I was scrolling through Instagram, which I used to judge myself for as a waste of time and now see as a form of self soothing. And I stopped on a story posted by my friend, Dr. Anna Roth, a professional psychologist. Like me, Anna is self-employed, highly caring, and wants to do all the things to make the world a softer place to land for people in free fall. And like me and so many of us, she is tired, down to her bones. After taking a break from work and online performance, she returned with this piece of advice nothing new for now. Reading those words the first time and even now is a big restorative breath in and out. Laura says, it's an unclenching of my jaw, a settling of my shoulders, a clearing of my to-do list and my desk in one fell sweep. I'm just kidding about that last one, but man, that's something I want to do at least once in my life. I'm a person whose self-esteem is not buoyed by past accomplishments, accomplishments, but by what's next. Potential is such a loaded term. We want to meet it, exceed it, live up to it. From childhood, we're caught in an endless emotional Rube Goldberg machine. First, I'll do this, and then I'll do that, and that'll lead to this, and then I can feel this, which will lead me to that, and then, and then, and then. Was not reaching, not striving, not optimizing an option? Do you also need a reminder that where you are and what you have and what you've done is enough? I did. I do. It's Friday morning as I'm writing this, and the first communication I had with my colleagues was at 8.30 a.m. my time. They were solidly into their workday, and I just cracked open my email. So, of course, I had to let them know I was sorry and that I was ashamed of my laziness. And my colleague replied, I was still in bed at 8.20. And you know what? I don't care. I'm a human being, not a robot. I need sleep. None of us are robots. All of us need rest. None of us as humans, businesses, or creatives can sustain constant growth. So say it with me, nothing new for now. And I thought that was just a really interesting piece and it really did resonate with me. So slow down, pamper yourself, let yourself feel, be kind to you, treat yourself like a beloved child or a relation or a pet. Do what's in your best interests, what you know is right for you, and what feels good and brings you contentment. And of course, when you're ready, you can always let your staff know what you've been up to, how you've been feeling, what some of your struggles were. You not only set the example for them, but they can also benefit from knowing that they're not alone, that it's okay for them not to be okay right now too. And keeping those lines of communication open is self-care for all of us. So we're going to head to that famous part of our podcast today. Gab, are you ready to recap first of season nine? (laughs) Well, well, well. (laughs) Uh, Yes, our recap is going to be short and sweet. 
Um, people are doing uh, okay-ish, and uh, there's a spectrum on that. Um, this summer uh, was theme, it was, I thought there were harder summers, but nope, this one takes the cake. And lastly, um, you know, the camp industry is going, it's, it's not needing to change, it, it is changing. Um, whether you want it to or not, it's changing. So let's take care of ourselves um, as that's, that's the number one thing, take care of ourselves first so that we can be rested and ready for that change. Great, thank you. And before we wrap up with our best practice from Ruby this week, here's how you can connect with us and get involved in the conversation. You can join us by using the hashtag camp code and share with us any topics you'd like us to discuss this year. And I'm willing to bet you've got a lot of them. Any guests that you would recommend that we talk to, any great leadership training tips that you have to share, we would love to hear from you. We have said it every year for eight years and we're saying it again in year nine. We are all about sharing in this industry. So tell us your thoughts um, and any questions that you have by using that hashtag camp code. And if you found our podcast to be useful, we would love it if you could leave us a rating and a review in your podcasting app. Your feedback helps keep the show going. And we love our reviewers so much that we will share your highlights here in future episodes. So here's how you can get in touch with each one of us individually. Ruby? You can reach me, Ruby, at rubyoutdoors.com or at rubyoutdoors on Instagram or at rubylin85 on Twitter. Perfect. Thank you. Gab? You can reach me on, um, on via email info at warouareau.com, or you can follow me on Instagram at Gabrielle Rail, and Rail takes two L's. Thank you. You can email me beth at gocamp.pro, um, and I'm on Twitter at Topaz. Now, Ruby, what are we talking about for our next episode? our next episode we did a little collaboration with the camp hacker podcast and perhaps you've been watching the summer camp professionals group but it's totally okay if you need a break from that too so it's fine if you need to take just take a step back uh (laughs) there was a question not too long ago about does the camp industry need a union so we got together with a couple folks and had a conversation about it so you should check it out great thank you Our final segment on each podcast is a best practice for leadership training. And again, we would love to hear some of your memorable moments or your most effective tips. Ruby, what is your best practice this week? Don't just do something. Sit there. So I fortunately worked at a camp this summer that instituted from day one of training the sit spot routine where every staff member found a spot somewhere on camp uh, that they would have a half hour after breakfast and they could journal or not, but it was just a time to sit and be quiet and relax and breathe and have some space. And that was a routine that continued through the summer, It continued with campers uh, and days the staff didn't get it. They, it was like, even worse than not having rest hour. (laughs) So I encourage you to find a sit spot this year. One of the cool things about doing a sit spot through the other three seasons is you can see how that spot changes and you'll probably see some different life emerge throughout the year. Um, But take some time and just be quiet, be still, let your hands be idle, let your brain relax and Just see what happens with that space. Great. Thanks, Ruby. Well, that wraps things up for today. Camp Code is part of the Go Camp Pro podcast network. Check out all our other podcasts at gocamp.pro slash podcasts. There are some amazing people with some sage advice. So look them up and give them a listen. And of course, you can stay tuned for all of our episodes of season nine to come. So here we go again, folks. From all of us here at Camp Code, take care of you. And thanks for the listening friends.